There's two questions every successful entrepreneur asks themselves on a regular basis. And that regular basis may be annually or it might be quarterly, even daily, depending on how quickly their business is growing right now. And these two questions point out the weakest aspects of their business, the parts that might be getting weak as they grow so that they could fix them before they begin hurting their growth. And when you focus on these things, you don't get stuck in growth like most companies do. And you can scale faster in the coming months than most companies scale in an entire year. In fact, it's questions like these that helped me grow multiple successful companies in the same amount of time that most companies struggle to grow just one. And every successful entrepreneur I know is great at asking themselves and their team questions like these. So if you become good at one thing this year, become good at asking yourself the right questions that lead to growth. And one of the first questions that I like to look at and that most fast companies look at is this. As it stands right now, can your business function without you? Most entrepreneurs are gonna answer that question with a no, but then there's business people who, if they walked away for a month, the business would still function at some decent capacity without them. And some might even be able to walk away for a couple of months and the business would function while they're gone. But for most entrepreneurs, their business cannot function for any length of time without them. And most businesses go through cycles so you have to ask yourself this question on a regular basis. But if you answered yes, then we go on to the next question, which is, as it stands right now, can your business grow without you? Not just function, but grow. And it's very rare that any business that was not actually built to grow ever gets to the point where they could function and grow without the person who started it driving the bus. Now, when I go into a business, either as an owner or an advisor or an investor, there's four things that I look at every single time. And those four things tell me exactly where I need to put the greatest amount of my time in order to make that investment not only grow, but become autonomous because there's a team of people who are self-motivated growing it for me. And I'm gonna tell you what those four areas of focus are so that they could be on your radar too. And my team uses a tool that helps them to track how each of my companies are doing in each one of these four areas so that they can see potential challenges before they happen. And a while back, I put a scaled down version of that tool online and I'll give you access to it for free if you'd like. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put a link right in the description. And if you're seeing this on another social platform and there's not a link, then jump over to YouTube and it'll definitely be in the description there. But the four areas that we look at for any business, whether it's one of the businesses inside of my personal portfolio or one that I'm investing in or one of the companies that I'm advising, four areas are exposure, conversion, lifetime value, and organization. Exposure is the number of your perfect target audience who sees your brand in a positive way at the exact right time that you need them to see it. Like if you're an influencer and every time you put out a video, thousands of your target audience watch it, then that's your exposure. Or if you buy ads on a big podcast that hundreds of thousands of your target audience watch, then that's your exposure. Or maybe you get interviewed on a big podcast that'll stay online forever and that podcast gets millions of downloads by your target audience, then that's your exposure. And where most companies get this wrong is that they either have only one source of exposure or they have way too many sources of exposure. Meaning if your company sells supplements and maybe the great majority of your advertising is on Facebook and since Facebook ads have worked out so well for you in the past and you've built maybe a 10 or 20 or $40 million supplement company, you think Facebook traffic is gonna be there forever for you. So you put almost all your effort behind that one source of exposure. But no marketing platform keeps performing forever. And to be quite honest, building a 30 or $40 million supplement company using just Facebook ads is really not that difficult to do. But you've gotta be willing, obviously, to test a whole bunch of Facebook ads and you'll probably have very little profit to put in your pocket after the end of the day because you put so much towards those Facebook ads. And in that situation, you definitely shouldn't be able to sleep at night because you should know that everything you've built could come crumbling down if and when your Facebook ads stop working at the level that they've been. So in that situation, the best use of your time is finding new ways to double or 10X or 40X your exposure by using other platforms. The other big hole that companies get stuck in is when they aren't really doing well with one platform, they tend to take the shotgun approach and they put some of their time into Facebook ads and some of their time into Google and then they go to a seminar and they hear about affiliate marketing and they put some of their money there and then they go to another seminar and they hear about TikTok ads or they read a book and they think about 
Instagram ads and how great they are. So their marketing is so diluted that they never gain maximum traction on any one platform. The, the idea here is to get momentum on one platform first. And the definition of momentum is to be ROI positive, meaning every penny that you spend on ads and every penny that you spend with agency fees comes back to you plus more, and that plus more is considered profit. And then you put that profit to begin testing another similar platform that has a similar audience with similar buying habits and similar algorithms. Don't test completely different marketing because the idea is to use the momentum you've gained from one platform to shorten your success curve on the next platform and amplify your results. And I'm getting way too deep into this for just a short video. But to go back to the beginning, the four areas that we look at when I go into a business, either as an owner, meaning that I'm starting a company from scratch, or an investor, meaning I'm putting money in and I own a percentage of that business, or as an advisor, meaning a company's paying me for my experience to shortcut their success curve. And by the way, if you wanna know how to become one of the companies that go, get into our advisory program, just go to my website and see if there's any openings there. But the four areas that I look for are always gaining exposure, converting more of that exposure to buyers, improving lifetime value or the number of times that a customer buys from us and the amount that they spend because we're giving them significantly more value than what they're paying for, or the fourth area is organization, which is the structure of the company, including the team or the culture or the other moving pieces that create an environment where others autonomously drive the bus for you so that your company predictably grows whether you're there or not. And no matter what stage of growth that you're at right now, whether you're struggling to break the million dollar mark or you've already been at the 10, 50, or 100 million dollar mark or more, those four areas always need to be on either your radar or other people's radar inside of your company. Probably when you first start, it's gonna be on your radar. And as you grow, you're gonna hire rock stars who know what to focus on and drive growth for your company.